Hello everybody, welcome to Stargazer Power Rankings Post Week 2. I'll be your producer today, Soren Flying, and Ben and Vancouver will take it away. What up? It's the Analyst Elikazams. I'm here for the Post Week 2 Power Rankings, along with the Vancouver Valiants. Hey, what's going on? Alright, let's jump right into it. Coming in at 14, it's the team on the screen... The Norwalk Neuverns. I think this is a um, a stay in place from last time, if I'm remembering correctly. Either they're exactly where they were before, or they moved um, down one. Uh, just another like pr pretty bad loss for the Norwalk Neuverns. I think um, you know he got pretty much stonewalled by the Sunnyside Sweetkins. His uh, glide score went down to 1% from an Ice Beam Screamtail turn 1. He let his Annihilate get burned. And he just really had no way to break through uh, Sunnyside's team. Sunnyside just kept healing and, you know, taking, shrugging off the hits that he came his way. Really, everything was just going... It could have even been a 6-0, probably. Everything was going horribly for him until um, Raging Bolt hit the field at, like, the very end and managed to pick up two kills. Kind of just because Sunnyside let, let them go down. Uh, it, it, it was, it, it was, you know, he was never in control. It never even really felt like he had any momentum going or any chance since turn one to, uh, to win the game. Um, I will say, you know, Hoopa on Mound is always a hard Pokemon to switch into, but the fact that every time Hoopa come, came in, you, you just had to sack a Pokemon. It didn't really seem like there was an answer to Hoopa on Mound. That's just an unfortunate situation all around, uh, to have. Especially when, like, you know, you could bring in Cinderor and at least, you know, attempt to do an okay job at it with, like, a Assault Vest set because it did end up being Special Hoopa. And also it has Intimidate, so if it's physical, you have that going for you at least. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it was misprep, misplay. I mean, a combination for sure of misprep and misplay. Just not taking into account how fat uh, Mug likes to play and how fat her team is. It really just led to, to a game that felt uh like he had no chance of winning from the very beginning yeah i, I know what you mean i was watching the match live um it kind of just felt like mug was in control pretty much the whole time was it a it was a 5-0 right is that or in a 4-0 i see it Four. um yeah because mug at the, at the end didn't um i think he didn't account for something like that or something like uh something was added a bit or the the Taurus was adamant and uh, she didn't know so she wanted to she's trying to save the differential but it's still 4-0 is good obviously um but i didn't really know what the um the cuz he was trying to use the Deoxys defense as like a setup kind of mon but it doesn't really work that well as that kind of like setup mon i feel like um it just didn't really seem to this guy doesn't have Deoxys him. defense am i looking at the wrong match uh oh you know Maybe. what you're right I, I i'm looking at mug's match from this week i i apologize yeah you're looking at yeah. uh, mug versus pittsburgh scissors yeah you're right that that was the that was the wrong one um here this is the right one sorry yeah this match okay um uh, i mean at least what i said from the the beginning though it still said the same thing so yeah it was a um it was a 4-0 loss to uh, to Sunnyside. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, it's just Norwalk's had a rough start to the season. You know, a 4-0 loss, 5-0 loss. It just really feels like he hasn't had control very much. He played good at, the, like, the very beginning of the metal game, but then it kind of just went out of control for him. Uh, the, the team, you know, it's struggling a bit. He's doing, like, manual sun now. I feel like... I don't know what's going on because like he also has a Terra that he could put on something like literally something really high value could be Terra and he just hasn't like put it on it. He's Slitherwing or Venusaur either or and he yeah. just hasn't put it on it so I, I, I don't know uh, exactly what, what, what the issue is there but so far just an unfortunate start and we'll move on to the team at number 13. At number 13, we have the Pittsburgh Scissors. Uh, this yes, has their this week the... three 
yeah, this has their week three match in actually, but we're focusing on week two right now. Um, so uh, an okay, you know, game against the the you know, it's kind of the same thing. It always feels like he has very little chance of winning. But, you know, the two games he's played, he's played against the Sada Chimps and the Tennessee Tyranitars. He, you know, it felt like at the beginning, putting up a fighting's chance, unlike Norwalk. It feels like, you know, he's actually, like, in these games. He, he has a chance to win for a bit, and then things kind of just break open at the end. And that's kind of, like, the issue with teams like this, in my opinion, with a bunch of, like, uh, do-nothing, uh, sit-around Pokemon, is eventually things get broken down, and then you kind of just get mini-swept at the end. It happened with Kiram, I think, last week, and then this week it happened with uh, Terrapagos. Once again, uh, Terrapagos, expertly used by Metal to just completely win the game. He keeps trying to do this setup uh, Tauros nonsense. Yeah, it, the, the it's just not trailblaze. Very, the trailblaze bulk up stuff. He's brought it twice now. In my opinion, it's just not very good. Um, there's, there's like, I mean. He did get like all the way to plus four because of um, weakness anger policy. point. Oh, oh weakness. Like, anger point. Ang anger point. That's right. Because if you got he got crit by the the triple axel. Yeah. So like, I guess if E Speed D Knight wasn't there, he could have swept maybe. But I still feel like it's just you know so unlikely as a thing to work to to bring it every week just doesn't make much sense to me. Um, you know yeah, he also kind of just let his. Reggie Lucky just kind of like exploded it. Just kind of, I don't know what the play was there. I mean, yeah. he had it for screens yeah. and stuff. It exploded for fun, I guess. And then, like, he started switching around, but he lost his protosynthesis boost on his gouging. And then he just lost his DOD, uh, all its HP to the freaking um, Okie Dogi. And then, you know, long story short, a turn comes around where Tropagos can set up and the game pretty much ends. It's, you know. It's just an interesting situation. I think he just has a lot of Pokemon that aren't very good, and it's causing, like, even games where he's playing, like, okay, because I don't think he's playing horribly so far this season, to turn out bad for him. Because, like, Pokemon like Porygon Z, you know, this this was a, su a Sunny Day Ice Beam Porygon Z. He clicked Ice Beam once in Sunny Day once. It just feels like a lot of his Pokemon are doing nothing, and it kind of leads to, you know, bad situations where he can't really, um you know, fully take advantage of a, of a situation. A little too passive leads to setup or leads to really strong Pokemon breaking through, causing some major issues. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you mean. It's just, I feel like he has a semblance of kind of what, like what he wants to do. It's just, I feel like there's just too much, what? It's like he's switching around a lot, but he's not doing anything. Like you, like you said, like do nothing Pokemon, kind of like, um, like Florigist and Deoxys defense. They just kind of like come out on the field and like, sure he sets up screens or he gets a Thunder Wave. Like a Thunder Wave definitely helped, but like sometimes it just doesn't. Or like yeah, Reggie Lucky too is just like it was screens this week, and I'm like, I mean it didn't really do anything. I feel like that much, and he still just lost to Tropagos in the end anyway. I feel like if you're gonna set up screens, the point is to go into your setup mod afterwards. Obviously, he tried with Tauros, it doesn't really work that well. I just I feel like you have gouging fires right there. I mean that I uh, I would say that that's your best bet at doing a setup is going to gouging fire. Um, because obviously Meadow had a uh, um he had brick break on his. Dragonite to help like break the screens, um, and I sure he had a couple other things to deal with gouging fire itself, but it's still probably his best chance at being able to sweep um, the week and just win like win the match outright. Like gouging fire can just do that. I've done it before, and it's just uh, he just I feel like maybe I don't know if he needs to make a couple swaps or something to like help build around gouging fire a little bit better. But overall, I I think this team has potential to do better um but for right now it's just not really all there i feel like yeah i, I think like the play hasn't been amazing but more so than anything it's a team issue if i had to uh put something on it that's what i would say and with that move on to the team at number 10 bit of a drop here 12 or 12 yep we have the moochin embors uh falling to zero and two after a 0-4 loss to the Frederick Klefkies. 
Uh, I just can't tell how hard Kurth is trying this season. It seems, I think the team is worse than last season's team. He, uh, uh, and I think he's trolling a little bit harder this season too. Um, I, I, he, he, all his movesets make sense. And this time, Klefki's came, you know, prepared for, like, some shenanigans. Like, that's why he didn't immediately attack the Bastiodon. He expected the Metal Burst. You know, and then uh, everything in that game was, like, you know, kind of going back and forth a little bit. But he, he was kind of, like, just losing Pokemon. Um, he brought Meloetta out on... He had, like, a Trick Room Meloetta to help with the uh, Conkelder. But it didn't really, you know, his plan didn't really come to fruition because of Belly Bolt with the um, uh, Rocky Helmet. You know, if your plan was the, to Trick Room sweep, then letting Kinkelder get low at the very beginning probably, you know, isn't the best uh, idea. And it's just Bastion, man, without Terra, it's really, like, so passive and just not very good. And it, it, it lets, um... Uh... Orange eventually lets his Karyagonal go down to get into a situation where his um, Valiant can sweep. And, you know, his Valiant just, uh, he, he didn't even fear that uh, the the Bastion had a real steel move because he had seen all its moves. And the uh, Valiant just goes for another Swords Dance and just, uh, you know, 4-0 sweeps the entire, the entire squad with uh, Liquidation. It's, uh... It, it, it's hard to say like it, it's hard to condemn him because I don't know how hard he's trying so it, it's hard to say what, what to exactly say he also lost week one like you know from a few like luck factors involved for sure so it, it's just until he shows that he's he's gonna try and win some games here uh, with with this team I think he needs to go a little bit a little bit lower on the rankings for now he does seem like he is trolling a little bit that's for yeah, sure. I know. Cool. I know he. I know Orange is his, his friend, and he likes to. He obviously he wanted to win. Um, he had some. Uh, he had the little, obviously the Bastiodon thing. That's why he clicked Dragon Tail first turn. But, um, yeah. I mean, he didn't really get to do anything with like his Morpico or his Delphox because it just got one shot by Valiant. Um, and then yeah, the Meloetta with the Trick Room, which was. I'm assuming his, uh, I don't know which one of his mons was his Terra Captain this week, either the Morpico or the, the Meloetta. I mean, it didn't really matter. They died anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it didn't, it just like, I just, I guess for me, like, I just don't really like his team that much. Um, I, obviously, I like Bundle and Landorus and yeah, I think his, I think he should bring Hisui and Lilling it more. It's just, it's, it's honestly just a really good Pokemon. Um, we allow like victory dance isn't like banned or anything, right? It's just like quiver dance. No, basically. we allow it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, it's just uh, I feel like a quiver dance, like or quiver victory dance, like can sweep. Um, I don't know if he wants to set up like a manual, like sun or something like that, with, like Del Fox or something like that. I know Kurth can cook some stuff up, but um, it's uh, it's just at least by the way he's playing right now, like you said, it doesn't really. He doesn't really seem that serious, so I, I feel like the the placement is probably good for now, for where he's yeah. at. Like uh, he's like I think the sub Lando was cool. Getting poisoned was unfortunate. Um, I think like the the trick room Conkelder stuff was cool. Although if you know Cox, your trick room abuser, you gotta make it so he doesn't get so low so uh, early. I think, but it's just you know he ends up bringing Pokemon that just end up doing nothing. Is I guess the the main. He's gotten swept twice now, right? So, and I think more, he, he's bringing this more Pico, and I guess Delphox also didn't do anything, and really Bastion didn't do anything. He's got some cool sets, but he's also got some sets that uh, just don't function in the flow of the battle. They can't come out until it's already time to get swept, I feel. And then it's kind of like a, an awkward position, maybe just a symptom of the way the team is built. Uh, but with that, we will move on to the team at number 11. The Crown Point Titans have uh, fallen a little bit further after a pretty pretty dominating loss to the uh, Lion City Leech Life this week. Uh, I think this uh, showed off the really uh, unfortunate 
uh, well, first of all, he fell for a uh, two cannon to knock off and immediately eliminate his Zoroark Hisui. So two cannon was actually putting in, you know, some crazy work on this team just because it's so passive that two cannon can heal off all the damage that comes its way. You know, you've got a dual wing beat uh mandibuzz but you're not really doing any real damage so it's just healing off and all the damage you're taking is uh you know really problematic and i and you know i feel like he really fell to the susceptibilities of his team this week which involve like not having enough damage uh without like setup or um like when your walls are out you're kind of really passive being susceptible to taunt and that kind of thing and then also, like, an issue, uh, perhaps, with setup on the other side. You know, a setup can really break through his fat and cause him to get into a situation where, like, a Pokemon like uh, Bramblegas and, you know, Mandibuzz and, like, Klefki, who can't really do a lot of damage back, just get swept because there's um, no real functional endgame for them. Uh, he got outplayed by a by a very fast Ursaluna Blood Moon. He did not expect it to have the speed that it did. Um, and then his uh, his own Ursaluna just got one v one as well by uh, by Blood Moon. Just kind of out prepped, I want to say, uh, and a little bit outplayed for sure too by the by the Golden Go, who just uh, completely set up in front of three really passive Pokemon. I think it, I think it's a. Uh, and more so showing how this like trick room team without trick room can kind of fall in under itself a little bit and uh, have some major issues. No Glow King this week, you know. No, no Diancy. Um, no, uh, he has Iron Hands now. Uh, I don't know if he had it last week, but no Iron Hands. Um, I, I, I just feel like maybe a, a bit of a prep issue a little bit. Um. It's it, it's just really dangerous when you, when you're operating uh, without trick room as a trick room team because then you're just kind of a, a slow kind of passive team at times. Um, I think you know the Satitan getting outsped by Ursaluna Blood Moon. That's just really good prep on the opponent. So you gotta you gotta shout them out for that. Not being able to deal with two cannon is just, you know, so unfortunate. Losing Zoro or Kasui immediately, so unfortunate. Um, yeah. What do you think, Vancouver? Yeah, I just le after reviewing the match again, I mean, yeah, he this was like he didn't have Iron Hands this week because he like did the waiver wire. Yeah, thing, he did right? it last so week. he added them. So he, this is the week that he could have used Iron Hands. Obviously, he didn't he, he didn't bring them. Um, he didn't bring. Galarian Slow King to set up like a chili for a Titan at all. That didn't really happen. Um, Ursuluna, just normal Ursuluna, didn't really do anything. Just all around, just like he, but I, I think it is like a maybe just a prep issue. Just a didn't really prepare for Golden Go or Ursuluna. Maybe he just saw that he had like Hydreigon, Ursuluna, and Golden Go, and was just like, oh, maybe I don't bring. Galarian Slow King because it's like oh it gets killed by those two things but I mean it's I feel like Galarian Slow King is just good enough that you just you bring it every single week like there, I don't feel like there isn't a week well, you shouldn't bring it but I don't also, know you... yeah, also if you're going to bring Satitan and you're not enabling Snow yeah. I, it, we saw it got outsped by Ursula Blood Moon here it's just like a very standard just okay Pokemon so then your only really heavy hitter that's like of note is Ursaluna regular, and Ursaluna regular can't sweep a sweep a week for you because I think the way this team gets wins is sweeps, whether that's Titan or Diancy or something like that. Yeah. And um, if you're not operating in that functionality, you're kind of just having a, a, a big issue. Uh, he also got you know the Golden Go had the Ghost Berry, so that's another you know just really good prep from uh, Shadow there. Uh, it, it's you know it's unfortunate. I, I think it's a combination of prep, but also the team maybe had a bad matchup into, you know, so many setup mons that could do, like, really big damage immediately. Uh, I still believe that this team can do good, so we're just going to have to uh, see where where it can go from here. Yeah, I feel like even, like, a like an Assault Vest, like, Amola would, like, really help him this week, too. Like, if he, if he brought that, just based on, like, the mons that he yeah, had it. I, I do think it might have gotten walled i mean maybe if he had mirror coat i think mirror coat Alomomola could have had a good 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 play here yeah for sure 
All right. Let's move on to the team at number 10. Bit of a drop here from the Warchester Whoopers. Uh, just, you know, a pretty, pretty standard. As we're, you know, going back and forth, seeing who's better than who uh, as the, the weeks go on, pretty, pretty standard loss here. You know, barely beat Crown Point last week and then, you know, loses uh, here to the Caterpies. Uh, these kind of teams that are around the middle-ish in terms of power ranking, uh, it, it kind of comes down to a, a situation where, like, you, you pick between, you know, they, they fight each other, and, you know, he lost. Uh, the Avalug turned out to be a huge issue. He thought a Fiery Dance would uh, kill it from his Iron Moth. Evidently, it didn't. And his Iron Moth going down ended up being a, a really big deal, in my opinion. Uh, Sandy Shocks proved somewhat problematic for uh, him, for sure. He couldn't really, it came in on Skarm, and he couldn't really do anything. He had to sack Enamorous to it, you know, to get Roaring Moon in. Uh, Iron Moth just really f failed to kill Avalug, like I said before, and it was just a, a really unfortunate situation, the pressure that Sandy Shocks was putting in and the living of Avalug. Not having a, a bug move for Darkrai, also turned out to be uh, really quite unfortunate. And it, it, ju it just, it probably could have even been like less close. This could have been a 4-0 or a 5-0, I think. But Caterpie is just kind of let some mons fall at the end. Uh, kind of just because. And uh, it ends up being, you know, a 3-0. So not too bad looking, but it did really feel like Caterpie's had control this whole time. Uh, Worcester felt a little underprepared for Sandy Shocks, a little underprepared for Avalug. Uh, the Quick Attack Sylveon was a really good bring from the Caterpies. Uh, Darkrai ended up coming out and, you know, doing some pretty pretty decent chip. Uh, not having the Leech Life for the uh, Darkrai turned out to be, you know, kind of problematic. I, I, I just think, you know, it's a case where he got outplayed in a pretty standard game, in my opinion. Outplayed yes. a little outprepped. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Um, there, There's, like, just watching it over, there's a lot of... Um... Uh, a lot of a lot of big, easily easily fixable mistakes in like a future game. Um, I he had a a couple a couple of things that I thought uh, could have worked. Um, as Enamorous didn't really get to do anything, maybe he could have. Let's see. I mean, do, does Dragon Ball counts as like touching the ground, right? I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Maybe he could have used um, sticky webs. Uh, I know, like, Avalog is there to. to it gets clear it body, it, but... though, so it could run. The... Oh, yeah. He, he could have run He could have run clear body. I feel like most of the time you do run, like. It's usually infiltrator. Yeah, it's usually infiltrator. Um, I guess usually if you run clear body, maybe if there's, like, an intimidate mon on the enemy team or yeah. something like that. Um, I think uh, he. And he also kind of just trying to think i don't i don't think um caterpies even had to use the sylveon once i don't even think it came onto the field at all uh but overall yeah i mean he kind of just he, he did just kind of get walled by avalug the whole game um i think even on like on like the turn where he clicked earthquake and killed the scissor and avalug came in i feel like you should have just stayed in and clicked a move with roaring moon and just killed the avalog at right there like it didn't there there was no reason he kind of just wasted the iron moth just just it just died to avalog for no reason yeah i um, think he was predicting a switch but something like a, that that, yeah. that was the, that was the misplay of the game for sure i'm assuming he didn't run the calc on that um yeah. but you know you live and you learn it, it was a, it wasn't it, it was just kind of like a, a pretty standard game sandy shocks was really played well from the opponent getting it in on skarm and honestly eating the skarm's drill run when it did go for a move so you fall to one and one just got to bounce back from here and we will move on to the team at number nine uh, speaking of at number nine we have the nevada caterpies with, uh, I believe, the same record and same differential as Whoopers, so uh, they're going to be one above, obviously. Did he uh, move up at all? Uh, he did move Just, up. Yeah. He is ever so slightly up from last week. Uh, I think he was like 12 last week. 
Uh, he's nine now. You know, a good game. Good use of Sandy Shocks. You know, I'm kind of saying the same things. Good use of Avalug. Uh, being able to rapid spin away the rocks was pretty cool. Was uh, at, at critical times was good. Having Quick Attack Sylveon, I'm pretty sure I suggested that. And uh, Pickums, if I remember correctly, it's really good. Uh, it's really nice to have for like Roaring Moon. It's, uh, good bring. Um, Dark Rye, you know, spamming the Dark Pulses. I'm, cer I'm sure it was locked in. That's a really good bring. Pult did its job. Everyone kind of just, you know, did what it had to do, except like Scizor, but Scizor still was a sack in order to get in something. Um, and obviously, you know, the MVP of the game was Sandy Shocks, bringing it in on Skarm constantly. It constantly got the pressure on Enam, constantly got the pressure on Skarm. Uh, just a, a really good set, really good, nice uh, bring uh, into the matchup, really good usage of it and more than anything. Sandy Shocks and Avalok. For the the two MVPs, yeah. <laughs> so nice nice game overall. You know you played really well. Um, Volcanion and Rillaboom. I don't think either came. So you know kind of shocking to see, but it worked out uh, well for you. So that's good. Um, going through the game again, you know some highlights. Uh, I I think uh, you utilize. Uh, your way against Iron Moth, who probably had a pretty good matchup against you pretty well. Uh, you predicted, uh, I, like, you brought Sandy Shocks in on Iron Moth, which was, you know, ended up working out really well for you. Um, I, I think the, the beginning of the game, everything kind of, like, was turning in your favor, and you had control the whole time, which is nice. Uh, yeah. You know, we just went over the game, so it's hard to find stuff to say, but Sandy Shocks <coughs> was just doing so much from the very beginning. Uh, he really couldn't find a switch into it. So he had to take over half health on a whole bunch of guys like uh, Roaring Moon and Araquanid and Don Fan and Iron Moth. All those guys, you know, were at half health by turn 14 because they couldn't find out any way to deal with the uh, Sandy Shocks. Everything was just really uh, finding itself in a problematic position. Uh, and you never even really had to hit recover with Avalug. Instead, you ma maintained momentum. Like, you hard switched uh, Avalug into Sandy Shocks when you believed that. Uh, you, when you could have easily recovered when he clicked Stealth Rocks, but it allowed you to get another, it allowed you to kill Enamorous. So just a really, really smart play, really proactive play from you, and it, it leads you to go up in ranking because of how you played well, so well with the Sandy Shocks. Yeah, no, I, I, I really agree with that one. He, he played it really well. Um, didn't have any like, like you've talked about before, like turns where the Mons are just doing nothing. Like you're just, you're sitting there and wishing with something and like you just wish protect and it doesn't really move the game along it just kind of like a standstill of doing nothing he pivoted a lot with his avalog and made real use of it um and it didn't even go down either it lived at like four percent um i think he's also got a lot of like a couple like sneaky like hitters on this team too like people just don't either prepare for it or like yeah, this team is also very not... good in my opinion yeah, yeah, yeah. this like, team i could see rising the rankings uh, if, he, if he continues to get wins like sandy shocks um is just a really good pokemon that people forget about um even as like a um he doesn't have it but it it could be a terror captain too as an option i could see like one week he brings like a because him on league it's unburdened right right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so him on league it's unburdened yeah it gets unburdened so like he could run like a like a grassy seed unburdened Hitmonlee, like a Terra, like set up Hitmonlee, and that could like catch someone off guard, and he could just win the game just because of that. Uh, just like a, something they're not expecting. Um, same thing with the Avalog, too, obviously. I don't know if um, Worcester was expecting like the how good the Avalog was going to be in this matchup. And even Sylveon, too, is just like another mon that also just. It's, it, it's always just good i mean obviously it's fairy type um it can set up it can just run like a choice specs or not choice specs but like a um whatever it needs to do uh it he can obviously help with it it's just a really solid fairy type for the team rounds out the team i like the the fairy dragon steel core on this team a lot it's a very offensive fairy dragon steel core uh but it, i think it works really well with this team for sure yep with that, we'll move on to the team at number eight, I believe. Probably the farthest down he's ever been. Yeah, two losses in a row. It's so true. That's, that's for sure. He's I probably <laughs> could have put him even lower. I thought about it. I thought about hovering him at nine. 
Um, oh no, the the portraits aren't loading. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if he loses again, which I think is very likely, then he is going to drop significantly. I'll say that much. Yeah. But for now, I'm going to kind of... It's just Abbotsford that doesn't work for some yeah, reason. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Alright, well we're going to have it here then. Um, if he loses again, I'm, I think I, I keep dropping him like one or two spots because I keep believing that like you know he's going to turn it around. I think if he loses again, I'm gonna have to like crater him. Crater. <laughs> for now, he'll sit at number eight. Um, another loss, a very close yeah. loss to. Yeah, he lost uh, to Sada, right? Uh, yeah, everybody. to Sada. Everybody uh, who played really, really well at the beginning put him completely on the back foot, made his Quagsire go really, really low. Well, lost his Samurai, who ended up doing nothing immediately. And then he ended up clawing it back, you know, a lot of good play. This is why I can't drop him so far. He shows such good play on the back foot at the end. It's just at the beginning of these games, he gets caught off guard by something, and it just completely, you know, deteriorates him. But he's playing really good players, too, so it's kind of hard. You know, Shuka Arbaliva with the uh, Harvest ability, really good idea to deal with grounds because grounds are such an issue for you. You got flinched into a Focus Blast hit. If neither of those hit, you get recovery off with Arbaliva, and then maybe this is an entirely different game. Um, you know, it's just it's just so hard, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Spectrier goes up against a Scarf uh, Excadrill. If that kills, this is probably a different game for, for the Spectrier. So, you know, a couple rolls, a couple, you know, hits or flinches not going your way. Uh, it's like minor luck like that can really stack up. And then, you know, everybody at the very end of the game kind of just ends up sacking his Torn and Grimmsnarl to get a situation where he wants to set up sword stances with his uh, Decidueye and can kind of just sweep the game with uh, a Shadow Sneak Decidueye. So even with all that, he did, like, wrestle control back and then... Uh, at, at the very end of the game, you know, he had a chance still until we saw it was like a Terra Ghost, Swords Dance, Decidueye. Uh, I, I do think he's playing, you know, okay. His opponents are just, you know, playing slightly better. Things aren't going his way uh, every single turn. Uh, I think the team has some major flaws that past Abbotsford teams haven't had. I think having to get so creative to deal with ground moves is really frustrating in the builder, uh, in my opinion. I think Spectrier, for how much we talk about how good it is, is limiting at times. Although, if, long, if it got that roll on Excadrill, I think it could have really, uh, really helped. Sneasler, I think, is doing its job. It's been doing really well. Um, Samurai Hisui hasn't really done anything yet so far. I, I just think the team might be, might be uh, a, a little bit worse than his previous teams, which is allowing him to lose, which is also allowing uh, him to fall further. Then he usually falls. Um, but the play-wise, I don't think he's been horrid so far. So I have a hard time dropping him, you know, incredibly low. Uh, he's only minus three at 0-2. Definitely, you know, room for a comeback, especially if he manages to beat Metal this week. Um, I think it's 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 uh, a really, you know, a make-or-break week for Agrons. He, he really needs this one to get back into the swing of things. To get to playoffs, to you know, make this season competitive, to get some confidence back. I, I really think this is uh this is all what it comes down to. Uh, we're on the precipice here for this team. Uh, what do you think, Vancouver? Yeah, I agree. I uh, agree with what you're saying too. Um, he didn't obviously he didn't get to really use his um what his uh Hisuian samurai just kind of like he he like switched it in and it just died to to freeze dry the. Yeah. Uh, the cure room. Um, if he, if he even got like, um, like a one, couple hazards up yeah, or something like that, it, 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 it's it, like it would have drastically changed the game. I feel like, um, a one or two like would have helped. Uh, like if, if, he got one, if he got one ceaseless off, the shadow ball would have killed Excadrill. Yeah, it, it would have switched in and not like it, it's just that it's it's weird to think about too. It's just like one spike. Can just change and completely yeah, change. I mean, game. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's just it's that. just uh, an, un an unfortunate start. He, he, he did get like I think at the very beginning of the game, saw uh, saw we got it up. played him. Brief. We got it up. Oh, nice. We got it up. Shout out, it up. Shout out yeah. Kuma if you're watching this. <laughs> uh, 
at, at the very beginning of the game, Sada just outplayed him really hard for like four turns straight, and it put him on the back foot. It made his quag uh, really low, and then it made him forced to bring in Samura, which killed it. So like after turn seven, it was just really difficult for him because it was basically four six essentially. It made it really difficult for him to find any ground, in my opinion, at that point, because rocks were also up on him. It's just crazy how the situation was so bad for him right from the start. And then after that, he played, like, pretty good. You know, he was trying to claw his way back, but it, it was a, a little, too little too late, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. I think with that, we'll move on to the team at number seven. This is a pretty high jump, in my opinion. No. Nope. Not yeah, there they are. The Lion City Leech Life um, go from like I think 11 or something all the way up to 7. He played really, really well. He brought a really good team. Uh, I think this, he might have had jitters week 1 and because he, he did show his sets for week 1 and they were cool sets, they just didn't work. And I think he played really bad at the beginning of that game, which put him on the back foot. But from I think Shadow is a good player. You know, uh, from what I've heard from him, I think he can, you know, really come up with some cool sets. And it showed this week, his Golden Go, excellent. Uh, his Blood Moon, the speed on his Blood Moon, really excellent to outspeed the Titan. Really, really great bring. Um, uh, you know, two cannon with Encore and Knockoff. He's brought it two weeks now. I don't know if he's going to bring it every week or what. But it worked this week. Last week it did nothing. Um, I, I would worry if it's a little too passive of a Pokemon at times, the way he's using it, which is like a defensive, it's like his one of his walls, which is, you know, kind of an odd idea. Again, the team, the major issue in my opinion is Fortress, I think it's a bad Pokemon. Uh, having it be your spinner is, uh, is kind of a, a disaster play, especially when you have like Ogre Pond Water who can't run boots at all, and you have a whole bunch of Pokemon that don't really want to run boots. Um, but overall... Very impressive play. I mean, I was very impressed by the Golden Go at the end. I was very impressed by the usage of Blood Moon to knock out two Mons. The beginning of the game, using two cannon for positioning. You know, all of it All of it was really, really good. It really had a complete control over the Crown Police Titans. Really showed how he can uh, how he can be very dominant in a game. How he can, you know, dominantly control a game and get a win. And it, it pushed him, you know, into this middle area. He's one and one plus zero, so that makes sense to be right around this middle area. Uh, I I think he he proved himself very impressive. Yeah, no, I I agree a lot. Like he just the match he had this week was just he was completely in control the whole time. Um, uh, I don't I, I do like his um I I like the use of his terror captains. I I think he could maybe utilize them just a, a little bit better like like especially t getting like that elect like a electric vicavolt like if he changes out one of those but o overall I, I like i like his team a lot um has he let's see has he no he hasn't even brought wellspring yet too like so he, no, he brought it this week oh he did bring it this week okay he brought it this it week, just... it, but it only clicked taunt which by the way taunt's a good bring into a team like uh so titans who have like yeah. a whole bunch of status moves they want to click and horse hazards and stuff yeah uh, just smart bring see, for sure oh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't get any kills, but also didn't die, so that's why I was like, I was yeah. a little confused. Also, going through the game, I will shout out Crown Point for doubling to Satitan uh, on an obvious Hydreigon. That was a good play, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. You did that You did that once, and it forced him to uh, sack his uh, two cannon. So, uh, I'll give you credit for that, for sure. That was a really good play by you. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess he hasn't he hasn't brought in Vicavolt or Swamper yet, is what he hasn't done. Yeah. So it's two more mods that you could actually do a few things with yeah but i mean he used he used uh you know two cannon really well it insta killed the zoro kasui so that was really smart uh he used ursula blood moon to get two kills that was really smart and then golden go just cleaned the game completely i don't think gardevoir even hit the field hydreigon barely hit the field you know he only really needed three mons to win the game when you when something like that happens having the ghost berry for the poltergeist that was smart as well uh it's and you know you could also hit, grab a shadow ball from Zoroark as well. Just when you only really need to use three Pokemon in the game to just completely dominate your opponent, it shows you know a level of, of mastery over your team and over a really good prep that uh, makes me think Shadow has a ton of potential to claim climb these rankings and uh, make the playoffs. And that's why I have him so so far up from where he was last week after a, a rough showing in week one. And with that. We'll move on to the team at number six. The Sawdust Chimps. So I felt 
conflicted about where to put Sawdust Chimps, because I kind of wanted to put them higher. I've been impressed. You know, they beat Agrons, they, they, they beat Scizors handily. I've been very impressed with Sawdust Chimps, so I kind of wanted to put them higher, but I had a really hard time putting the next person below them. So, like, it, it just felt, you know, just based on circumstances, unfortunately, it, it, it was hard to... to because the only per two people I would put above, uh, Sawdust Chimps above, are the next two people. And it felt, based on circumstances, very difficult to do that. So, unfortunately, you know, they still go up. They would go up one rank. But I did want to put them up higher initially. It's just, based on circumstances, I really couldn't. Um, but, you know, ex really good game. Really impressive game. Especially the first seven or eight turns of that game against Agrons. Really well played. The Giga Drain, really smart prep. Going for the freeze dry, believing that he's not Scarf, or straight up not caring that he's Scarf. You know, it worked, it paid off, I like it. I think you sometimes you take those gambles. Sometimes you just go for it, you know what I mean? And it puts you in a really good position. Uh, you can't play scared all the time and expect to win, in my opinion. Uh, nice flip turns from the Tentacruel when you needed to. Having rocks on a Scarf Drill. I've done that a lot, Scarf... Pokemon with hazards. I think it's good. I like it a lot. Just switch yeah, out after. It misleads um, your opponent. It misleads sure. your opponent, and it, it, it's uh, what's it called? Uh, you can just switch out. People never want to do it because they're like, oh, then I'll be locked in, and they'll set up. Just switch. It, it's really not that. that switch hard. is the best move in the game. Yeah, Torn uh, used well here. Had to get a flinch on that Arbeliva, according to the calcs that I've heard. Uh, in order for Focus Blast to kill the next turn, so going for it was, you know, a good play by everybody. Uh, at the end there, you sack two poke. I, I don't, because you didn't have Reflect Up in the end when you started Swords Dancing with Decidueye. I don't fully understand, like, sacking Torn and Grimmsnarl and being last mon Decidueye. Uh, maybe you can explain it for me in the comments, why it needed to be last mon Decidueye. Uh, and then there was a turn where you're you could have clicked Taunt on the uh, on the Pheasantipity to make, keep it low instead of, um, like, a, I think, yeah, turn 18. If you click Taunt on Pheasantipity instead of U-Turn and it can't roost, I think the game gets easier for you. Uh, but overall, you know, good good use of Sacks. Uh, Axe could drill, you know, if you didn't get the roll uh, for the Shadow Ball, it could have been scary for sure with the Excadrill on the Grimmsnarl. There are, like, ways you could have lost this game, but I, I am impressed with your play. You know what I mean? I think I think uh, you had control for a good majority of the game. Um, you, you a, After Torn goes down, you go... I, I would just say, like, turn 30-ish in the game. After Torn goes down, you go Grimmsnarl just to spam Spirit Break until you die. I don't know why you don't go to Sidueye. Um... Because you don't go for, like, uh, light screen or anything. And you just end up doing what you would have done anyways, which is spam Swords Dance and then sp go Terra Ghost and, s and click uh, Shadow Sneak three times. It, it, but, you know, the Decidueye end game, I knew it was and you, it was your plan from the very beginning, so I, I understand that. Uh, re re overall, just a very impressive game from you, I'd say. You know, it, it could have gotten out of hand from Spectrier at the very end there. Uh, our Believer maybe could have lived if a Focus Blast Mist happened or, like, Air Slash uh, didn't flinch. Uh, it could have, it could have recovered up and, you know, lived for a bit longer. But, uh, I, I think you played your turns right, uh, for the most part. Uh, a good game overall, for sure. Uh, Iron Boulder, I believe, has yet to come. I wonder why. Uh, it's not yeah. a very good Pokemon. And the Dunsparce, uh, but too. You're using Decidueye really well. Uh, that's, that seems to be your preferred Terra Captain. I like that. Uh, Torn, you're bringing it both weeks. Uh, it seems to be a Pokemon you really like. So, uh, you know, I was talking in pre-PRs how I don't love it. It still doesn't hasn't, like, wowed me. It's just done, like, standard. Like, it's clicked Air Slash, and it clicked Focus Blast, and it hit him, and that's nice. It broke our Believer in this game, and that's huge. Uh, kind of circumstantially, but it's still, it's working. And Excadrill and Kiram, I mean, you're using them really well. Uh, and so, like... Extra Gel, Kiram, and Decidueye are clearly very Pokemon you're very comfortable with. Um, re really, really strong play from you, I'd say, uh, so far this season. Uh, I've been impressed. What do you yeah, think? No, I, yeah, for sure. I, I like he he has been playing 
really well. I, I do face him this week, so like I'll we'll see how how that goes. Um, uh, I'll say that uh, I do like I like his Terra captains a lot. Um, they're really nice uh, options on his team. Obviously, he hasn't brought in Iron Boulder yet. Uh, maybe he just hasn't found a use for it yet, or doesn't know. Uh, yeah, if you should maybe see if not. you can find something. I mean, I know it's your fast guy because you have no one in the one twenties without it. Maybe see if you can find something in the one twenties. I don't know because there's probably nothing on the board at this point. But Iron Boulder is just—it's not very good. So, we'll 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 see. Yeah, I mean, I can. There is some uses for it. Like if you, you can bring it in, if like your opponent's not expecting it, uh, like to to do to do much or something like that. But there is just. It's it's not it, it's kind of frail, is it? Or uh, I don't it's know. not super it's, frail. No, is it because it's got like it's similar to like Terrakion stats? Because I don't know, I forget if Terrakion's got like higher defense, right? Um, uh, I, I, I would know. have to I'd I'd have to check it. It's it's not it's not that big of a deal. Um, uh, but for the most part, I mean, if you did want to, I mean, the what there's because you said it was a is a one twenty mon, right? It's 140. Oh, it's 140. Okay, so yeah, he, he he could switch it out. There there's still there's still a good amount of things available. Like there's that you could that you could take over it. Um, I I guess he'd have to look through and like see what he'd want. Uh, maybe like uh, I know you used it once as like Infernape. Um, I yeah, think I think that, he needs something fast. Is the issue? Yeah, I got, I don't know how fast Infernape is. Um, oh wait. Yeah, the ogre like the one of the ogre ponds, like ogre pond cornerstone or uh, normal. Ogre yeah, pond I'm, I'm talking fast, fast, like one fast, fast. Okay, yeah. Oh, I see what you mean by like by like because that's the, that's the speed yeah. tier Boulder is in. And he has <laughs> yeah. really that speed tier. I mean, you could drop Hippopotas and pick up Weavile. It's like you already have an Ice type and a Dark type, but I mean, Weavile is much better than Boulder in my opinion. Um, and, you know, ice damage is, like, if you overwhelm with ice, it could be really good. Like, if you drop Hippopotas and Boulder, you get to 150. One, yeah, two, three, you just, four, he, five, he wouldn't, he, he would oh, only yeah, have 9 need, mons, you need, Yeah, you need 10 mons, that is tough. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe you'll bring Boulder and prove us wrong at some point. But so far, uh, you know, good, good play so far. Um, uh, really good play. Tentacruel, really good Pokemon mm -hmm. as well. Um, nice set this week with the Giga Drain. Uh, Yeah. With that, we'll move on to the uh, next team. The Luscious Low Punnies, who ended up taking a 0-1 loss to the Vancouver Valiants this week. It's, because, uh, like, I thought about putting, because Sada's Chimp is 2-0, obviously, right? And Luscious Low Punnies is 1-1. One one. She was 2 last week, you know, because she had a really impressive win over Agrons. I thought about putting her... Uh, it, it's just, because, like, I thought about putting, but she was... I thought about putting her uh, lower than Sawdust Chimps. It, it's really hard when you lose to a crit, right? It, it's really hard to, like, discredit her, because she was going to win 4-0 without a crit, or 3-0 at least. Um, so, or without, like, crit flinches. Granted, it, it was, like, crit... It, it was a crit within, like, a para flinch, you know, attempt to get her low enough to completely uh, win the game. Um... I, I do think, you know, she played okay. I think Killawatrell not being Scarf is interesting, because I think Scarf Killawatrell was really, really good in this game. Yeah, I would, um, I would have just lost if that was Scarf Killow. Yeah, sure. the Calm Mind Latios was good. Uh, you know, Treads going down early because of the Psychics from Azelf. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a symptom of, you know, not having, like, great Psychic resists, in my opinion. Um... It was like uh, Azumarill, I think, uh, did pretty pretty good this match, from what I remember. Uh, it got like a kill on Revavroom. Really, the main issue was Porygon 2. Uh, Vancouver had a really hard yeah, time breaking through it. Vancouver had a really tough... He missed a gunk shot, so like he couldn't get it low. He um, wasn't doing over half to it with Azelf or anything. He didn't get any Spadef drops on it as uh, Mary spammed Recover. Um, I think, like, you know, Clef Clefable ended up not doing much this match. Kind of just ended up dying in the end to uh, after coming in on Sarah Ledge once. 
I'm just yeah. of the I'm just of the opinion that like you know Mary played fine. She did enough to win. It's just in the end she lost because of you know a little bit of luck. It it is she, like a, a likely situation where you know paralysis plus flinch. You have a low chance of hitting. So there is that. Yeah, she let my Azelf run rampant a little bit at the beginning. Of at the, the game. beginning, but yeah. I mean, she she got herself into a good position with Latios, which forced you to sack yeah. Sarah Ledge, basically. So there was that at least. Um, I, I it, it's hard it's hard to like condemn her for anything just because, you know, she played she played to, she, enough to win, so it's kind of hard. Uh, you know, I, I question bring Kilowattrell with it not being Scarf. Knowing about Lantern, knowing about like Scarf Enam, knowing about Battle Bond Greninja, uh, it, it just seems like Scarf Kilowattrell was so good here. Not either not seeing it in prep or thinking it wasn't worth it in prep. I mean, that also ended up losing you the game. Um, it's it, it's just tough. It's tough to really like say anything bad. Because you had control the whole time. Uh, like at the beginning, spamming recover. Obviously, there's not, like not much else you could do, but like maybe go Latios. Uh, you did get a crit on the ace off at the very beginning too. Uh, but I will say it's just... It's interesting that um, like there was no spadef drops. And it's interesting that the gunk missed. That's kind of what opened up P2 to be so good to begin with. Um... Yeah, it should have yeah. like Iron Head or something like that. But I yeah. see what you mean. Yeah, it, it was a interesting game for sure, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think fifth is fine for you. Uh, you know, losing like that sucks. I'm sure. I'm sure low punishes will be able to bounce back though. Yeah, looking at her next few opponents, I think she could, she'll probably win, just knowing how she's how good she's done in the past. Yeah, so I think with that, we're going to uh, move on to the team at number four. Let's go. We have the Vancouver Valiants, <laughs> who don't move, I believe. They stay at four. I'm fine. It's hard uh, <laughs> to move him up, but I can't feel like I could. I, I originally had him fifth, and I was going to put, like, because, uh, like I said, I had Sada at fourth, and then I, I was really, I really wanted to put Sada higher. It's because I re I think his team's way better than Sada's, so that's kind of why he's at fourth. You know what I mean? I had him higher initially in the preseason power rankings. I had him at uh, second, and then he's moved down. Either despite being two and zero, oh, he's moved down to fourth because I think of all the teams that are winning, all the two and zero oh teams, he's easily made the most mistakes. He consistently does things not correct uh, in terms of turn <laughs> order. I think he probably should have kept his Rev of Room once it was low against the Aqua Jet Azumarill. Um, I think, you know, the Azelf stuff at the beginning was good. Um, I, th I think, you know, going for it with Rev of Room so early probably wasn't ideal, in my opinion. Going for the, for the game with it so early. Uh, especially going Terra Ground when Aqua Jet Azumarill was still around. And then, you know, bringing Seru Ledge out the turn after to click Shadow Sneak once and then die to play rough. And didn't even die to play rough, just so he could have gotten a Will O Wisp off because it was Will O Wisp. So instead, he kind of just, you know, sacks Seru Ledge for essentially no reason uh, after Rever Room goes down. I actually don't even know why it came out. You have any uh, insight on that? Um, what? I don't even remember what happened. I, I think turn so he aqua jets your rev of room and then you go seru ledge on. Oh, yeah, no, that was I'm not gonna lie, that was a complete misclick and I didn't feel like swapping out, so I just I just like, all right, fuck it. Yeah, kept, so yeah. that's what I'm talking about with like <laughs> he's kind of like making the most mistakes easily so far and a little bit lucking his way into these wins. I think the enamorous was good. I liked having superpower on it because it put pressure on the um, the P2, P2. Yeah. which allowed uh, the uh, Clefable to take chip. I think maybe if he went for uh, the Sludge Bomb on the turn Clefable came in, you know, tried to make a prediction, 
Uh, like, he would have put Mary in a really uncomfortable position where she had to sack him on, and then maybe he could have broken the game without even needing luck. Um, you know, Lantern did its job at the end game, and then he, like, he knew what he had to go for at the end. Clicking Hydro Pump that one turn, uh, bad play. He should have known he had to go for para flinches. Um, I, I, I don't know if he thought Hydro Pump would 2 it KO, but there was no way I, in any world I, it would have. I guess, I, I didn't, I, I thought, I just wanted to see how much Hydro Pump would have done. Obviously, I got a lucky para, but. Yeah, because um, if, if she got that Thunder Wave off that turn, because that was the turn she had the best chance to get it off. If she got it yeah. off that turn, it would have been, like, straight up Jover. Yeah. Um, see, obviously, he's lucking his way into wins, but it's something that can happen when the team is so strong. You know what I mean? This team is so incredibly powerful. Greninja, Seraledge, such, you know, snowball Pokemon that, like, one thing goes his right his way and he can just win. And when that kind of power is at your disposal, where you can mess up so hard and still win, I think you have to be ranked high. Because you can just kind of like figure it out, like uh, at the very end. You know what I mean? You can eat, so uh, because the team's so strong, because he's still winning, I'm gonna I'm gonna stamp him here at number four. Yep, and I'm gonna continue to be winning uh, at least at least four in a row. That's that's right. what I'm going for. <laughs> You're gonna lose to the Pittsburgh Scissors. Let's go. No, I think I feel like I've lost him multiple times. One, you have. Just, you do. You uh, lose to him regularly. Uh, <laughs> like multiple misplays. He's, just he's got, like he's got I, your number. The Pittsburgh like Scissors legitimately, is like a mythical man. Because after yeah. after after week four, he just wins out and makes playoffs. Yeah, Pittsburgh Scissors. You know, Pittsburgh Scissors he's does nasty. go crazy in the second half of the season. Nasty. Yeah, I just like I've lost him in the past just because I'm like I I make some really really dumb decisions yeah. and i just like it just ends up making me lose the game and i'm just like oh my god i could have won it's just All right. it's really annoying <laughs> can we move on to number three probably the highest catapult so far this season uh you can see that the week three there too as well but that doesn't count towards this uh but the highest catapult we've had so far this season the sunny side suicunes up here at number three she is just playing lights out. She's in control all of her games. She's dominating every aspect of the game. I think, you know, Hoopa Unbound is doing really, really well. It's 7-0. and uh, he, She's got the number two Pokemon as well, Vileplume, 6-0. and um, she, She's just playing so fat and wearing the team down, and the opponent can't do any real damage to her. And then her Hoopa Unbound gets in, and just picks guys off. Pick, pick, pick. That's what happened against Norwalk. Norwalk had no switch into the Hoopa Unbound, and it just picks off opponents. It Terra Fairies, so, you know, it's not even clicking fairy moves necessarily, like sometimes it clicks Terra Blast, but it just gets rid of the really bad defensive typing and replaces it with a really, really good one. So the Hoopa can come in kind of freely and just click moves to pick off opponents. It's working out really well for her, along with, like, the Hazards from Ting Lu and the Fat from all her Pokemon. Um... You know she loves screens, it, and she's pivoting around really well. It just feels like she's really, really comfortable. You know, you can say difficulty of opponent hasn't been, like, crazy so far this season for her. But I think, you know, you just play who's in front of you, right? That's what they say in sports. All you can do is play as who's in front of you. And so far, you know, she's completely dominating them. Proving that she's, you know, in the upper half of Stargazer for sure. And is very, very likely making a, a playoff run this season. Uh, I think this is the best team she's ever had in PBO. I think it's the most her team she's ever had. Uh, I, I think with this team in particular, she's very, very scary and a threat to anyone. Uh, especially if they don't know the intricacies of the way she plays. What do you think, Vancouver? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've just... Mug obviously drafts a very similar team every season. Um, just like always really fat. Um, uh, it's just if you can if you can catch if you can catch her out and like get a good like turn or two of like setup and then it, her whole team just kind of like unravels. But so far she's just been really in control the whole time. Not really had to worry about it. Um, I'm surprised too. Like even I guess she doesn't have to deal with it. But like just with how much like how many times she's lost a setup in the past that she didn't try to like draft like 
like an unaware mom, but I guess it's working out so far since there hasn't really been much uh, set up against her. Um, just the knows exactly what she wants to do every single week. Uh, all of her mons just kind of work off of each other. Just really good synergy she's got going on um, with the the fast, strong, like pivoting mon like Thunderous Therian or Hazard setting with like Ting Lu or Vile Plume or the support Screamtail she runs like every week and just even like Cinderace too, another really fast, strong pivoting mon as well and Corviknight just really. Yeah, well, overall, the major just, thing like, for this team is she has the actual like offensive Pokemon. They're her off yeah. like she likes Cinderace and she likes Thunderous, but she has like the actual power and the actual speed this time that sometimes she's lacking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even like Hoopa Unbound too is just really, really yeah. strong Pokemon. I think especially. I think like this team is more well rounded than a Mug team has ever been, and it's really letting her unlock her full potential as we have seen in the results so far. Yeah. For sure, I probably best maybe even the best team that Mugs drafted before. It's the best team she's drafted in PBO at the very least. Yeah, I don't know because Mugs done a lot of leagues. I don't know every single team she's ever had, but by far the best team she's drafted in PBO. Yeah, for sure. And with that, we will move on to the team at Numero. Oh, so Vileplume Terra, really, really good Pokemon. I knew that already, but we haven't seen it in uh, PBO yet, so we're seeing it now. Yep. We'll move on to the team at number two. Uh, going up a few spots in the rankings, we have the Tennessee Tyranitars. Uh, Kurth, uh, with another uh, sweep from a mini sweep from Terrapagos, getting four instead of six this time, becoming number one on the kill leaderboard. You know, Terrapagos is just getting all the kills, and it's kind of because um, Kurth is going into both these weeks with the the exact same plan, which metal. is, you know, scout what the opponent has, or metal. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're good, you're good, you're good. I said curse. <laughs> yeah, I'm making sure. All right, this is metal. Metal is going in both weeks with the exact same plan so far, and it, it's just, it can't be stopped at the at the moment, which is scout what the opponent has, you know, kind of figure out what's going on, maybe lose them on, maybe three, like you did this week, but then find the opportunity, find the correct turn to get Terrapagos in, click the call mind, uh, their opponent's weakened enough, you know what they have, you know they can't stop it. Get a speed boost with Rapid Spin, maybe, and then just Terra Star Storm your way to victory. It's worked twice now. Uh, it's been dominant both times. He's felt like, uh, like at the very beginning of the game, uh, Metal does this thing where he kind of doesn't feel like he's in control. Like, he's losing Pokemon first, it kind of feels like he's down. But I think it's part of what Metal's planning. I think he does all of that with the idea that at the end of the day, I will understand what the opponent is doing and I have my Terrapagos here to finish the game if need be. Which in turn makes me think he always has control of exactly what he needs to have control of. You know, a, a smart Acrobatics Mew, I think, came this week. Helped with the Grass Tauros. Um, Dragonite with Extreme Speed, again, you know, it, when Tauros potentially could have gotten scary because of Trailblaze and Anger Point. Kept it in check. Um, the Tinkaton, you know, did its job. It encored the, uh, DoD. Just really smart, you know, consistent play from Metal across the board to get into the position that he wants to. Metal really understands game positioning, like, finding the line to win. Even if things aren't, like, necessarily, like, you're up three Pokemon or whatever, you can still find the line to win the game. Terra Darking to deal with the uh, the Dio the Dio S D against uh, the Okie Doki. Another smart play from Metal, using the opportunity to bulk up to get Florges in. All of it, you know, conditioning for the situation where Terrapagos is able to set up and essentially win the game. You know what I mean? It's all it's all uh, uh, kind of coinciding exactly to where he wants it to go. Um, He's got eight really, really good Pokemon. I think he's, we're fully, because uh, he hasn't brought any of the three low tiers yet. Uh, he might bring them like once eventually, but we are committing pretty much hard to the to eight good Mon philosophy. Uh, it's a decent philosophy, you know. Okadogi, really solid Terra Captain. Uh, I've been very impressed with what Metal's shown in terms of his acumen for being able to find the line to victory, you know, through the chaos of a Pokemon battle. Yeah, uh, just really, really impressive play so far. Just, uh, we'll uh, we'll have to see this week against Abbotsford Agrons. Um, just 
based on his opponent because I, I i obviously i don't I, norwalk and scissors are they're they're good they've shown good play in the past just not um as high level as like abbotsford had so this will definitely be a, a good test of his skills this week for sure um his team just like it uh, it always been he hasn't had any really had to make any transactions just because he's just got a really solid team already um tropicos was it, that was his first money picked overall right that yeah yeah round one. okay yeah that's what i thought um just just the the team cohesion is just really good um the uh the fairy dragon steel core is between two mons so he's got tinkaton which is just a nice uh really nice uh part of the team he's got i didn't even realize tropicos has 10 kills jesus yeah, it's the that, kill is it that, that's the. Yeah, I was gonna say that's definitely the kill leader. Yeah, you can see it's right um, next to it, number one. Yeah, yeah number one. Yeah, no, Tr- Tropicos is just putting in work for his team. You know, it, it literally got six week one and it got four week two. Yeah, he's done the no, same it, thing for two weeks, which is you know condition the game and then get Tropicos in and sweep at the end. Yeah, Tropicos just sweeps the rest of the game. We'll have to see how Abbotsford deals with that uh, this week. Um, I've never, I haven't fought or done Tropicos that much like since it came out like in ladder and stuff like that like how do how do people usually deal with it like uh, either on like the like normal ou ladder or i guess it's banned right so i no um, it isn't banned it's not i thought it was no um I'm pretty maybe sure. not i think when i check on showdown it says it's an ubers so that's Did why they put I, I was... in ubers and i missed the memo they they, they might have <laughs> um yeah it is it is an ubers damn they banned him Shoot. yeah that is that is tough um i guess because yeah. it can also terra as well and it turns well no they banned terra. the terra immediately yeah but I they let regular I guess yeah they no they, they just banned regular as well damn that, that kind of yeah, sucks it's, uh, so yeah it's banned but uh yeah i mean the way you deal with terapagos is ghosts uh typically uh because they can't tear star storm or you encore him or you you know the, the same way you deal with all setup mods because the only yeah. way terapagos Tropicos can only sweep if it's set up, uh, and the other set is, like, annoying. It's, like, the toxic, roar, stealth rock, rapid spin stuff. Uh, like, a, like it, a bulky support Yeah, like mod. a bulky support mod. But that, that's manageable, but getting swept is really dangerous. So, like, it's the same way you deal with any setup, really. Yeah, and it's got the... It's... It, it's got that really good ability to to like just help it it, it almost gets the just ability like a is very set. broken yeah, it, yeah it's a free setup move that's why setup free so good setup. On it. yeah it, it's it's not a, it's not like the other moves right that it's like well what's no it's, it's like a resist. shadow shield yeah um, it's a resist or multi-scale but yeah no it's literally just it resists any the first move that hits it right when yeah it's no matter what HP. it resists yeah yeah no that that's really good and especially because you can it gets recover and you can get it back to full HP. So then it doesn't can... get recover. It doesn't get recover. I thought it did no, get recover. It does not All get right. recover. I, I guess it, that's right. It, it was using. I, I forget how I was getting health back. Is because as leftovers. So yeah, if... leftover leftovers gets health back. They say it runs protect sometimes too. That's like the toxic protect set with leftovers to get back to the thing. Yeah, it does that a lot as well. Yeah, I was gonna say if it gets recover, that thing would. That if it got recover, would be broke. yeah, it would be banned from draft league. I think it's, yeah. it would be uber broken. Yeah, um, that's for sure. But yeah, I mean, really good use of Terrapagos so far. Uh, strong team, strong player. Up here at number two. And with that, we'll go to the team at number one. At to number no one, to no surprise, another dominating win. The Frederick Klefkies. No reason to drop him at all if he keeps winning and he keeps winning, you know, 3-0 plus, which is, you know, considered a dominating win. There's just no way, reason to drop him at all. Really a uh, good use of Iron Valiant in this game. You know, it, it was into Kurth, who, you know, uh, was trying some, you know, kind of wacky stuff, I would say. But uh, he called the Metal Burst on Bastiodon. Really good call there. Uh, he got Conkelder, who was a big threat to him low, which was uh, nice with Garchomp. He had Calm Mind in DD, which, you know, one of you won the Meloetta. Really smart uh, belly bolt set allowed him to uh, not get completely uh, boned by Conkelder because he had the Rocky Helmet. And honestly, he had a really hard time uh, with belly bolt in general, Kurth. And I think if he Terra'd the uh, belly bolt, he probably could have, you know, stayed in on Lando and maybe just like 1v4 the last four, if I'm being honest. But 
he switches out, uh, lets his Kraglin go down to his Stone Edge to set up a situation where he can get some Swords Dances up. Uh, correctly predicts the Metal Burst again and Swords Dances again so that he can't do that. And then he just gets a clean Liquidation Sweep. You know, very clean line. Knew what he wanted to do. Um, lost two Mons in the process, but felt like Mons he was you know happy to lose to get the situation he wanted to win. Uh, Valiant so far for him. Do, he's, despite saying he doesn't like Valiant, so far Valiant's doing a very, very nice job for him. Uh, and overall, just a, a very impressive uh, uh, season so far from Orange, from a team that I think is actually really, really good. Yeah, I mean, he's just... Um, I, I said it last week too, he just, I, I think he's got, probably got uh, at least a team cohesion-wise just all, everything on his team just clicks together. Like, there's not the only one he hasn't brought yet is Quillfish, and that still has a, like really good uses. Um, can you you can you use Eviolate on that thing? I feel like it was no. like it, it worked at some time. I, no, I know I, I I know it's the Hisuian one. Just, I I just felt like there was something like on Shodan that allowed it to. No, or it was like, but but yeah, no, it doesn't work. So it's just it's normal. Kasuin or normal quillfish, but it's still it's still a useful mon depending on like what week he needs to bring it. Um, yeah, it's got flip turn. It's got all the hazards. It's got intimidate. Still, it's still good. Yeah, no, of course. It's just it. He just hasn't brought it yet. He just hasn't had a, had a reason to. But he he definitely has like um he's def he's probably got the best fairy steel dragon core. Just valiant Garchomp and Empoleon, just really really nice. Um, I know Empoleon's kind of like a um. What we call it like a fake seal type because of like the the water typing uh a little bit or no, uh, i no, guess Empoleon, Empoleon's not a fake steel no I, what's I think, the it, it, oh i'm thinking like steel. yeah dragon steel or um uh like fairy steel because it's weak it's not weak to or it doesn't resist a steel type moves or whatever like that um, yeah or, or like dark steel yeah something like that uh but no it's just it's just a really solid solid team terra captain's uh, really really good um indeedy uh definitely has some uses uh with the psychic terrain as too just overall like I, I would say like i'm i'm glad i don't have to fight this team at least in the regular season that's for sure I, i'm uh i'll uh we'll have to see if playoffs comes around if we're both in it or not but um i like uh, obviously frederick klefkies he's always been uh just one of the the top premier players in the in the pbo and he continues to prove that this season just being 2-0 with two dominant victories um just and gotta get a playoff w yeah for sure he hasn't gotten one yet has he he's never won a playoff game no yeah so i i think he's got a really good shot of doing it this season we'll we'll see after you how i think he feels he'll certainly make playoffs it. so we'll have a shot for sure we'll see yeah. if he takes advantage of it mm -hmm. but with that we are going to end the recording I believe yeah. this has been the yeah. post week two power rankings for PBO. Peace out. I think that's a good way to wrap it up. See you guys next week.